Hello everyone, um, my name is Vincent and um, my YouTube account name is Wiccan and you probably know that. That was a bad start, but anyway, um, this is tutorial something 109, something like that. But uh, this tutorial is mainly focused for beginners and uh, first time users to Unity. So all we're going to be doing is creating a, a new scene and then we're going to add a script to it that just prints a message out on the console. So the first thing you do is when you open Unity, um, you probably won't get this screen, but you'll get something like uh, give it a minute. You'll get something like this project wizard here, I think. But one, you can just go to File and New Project for that. Yeah, so File New Project, and then here you can uh, type in a location or find it, find it with the browser. But I'm just gonna keep mine in my documents, and I'm gonna call this First Time Tutorial. Like that. Now I'm not gonna import every any anything. I'm just gonna create it myself. I do not want to save that project. Yes, yeah, nice All American Reject song. <laughs> so I'll just pause it while my uh, project project creates itself. And there we go. Okay. So let me just close this. You should have four split. I believe no wide yeah you should have wide great so the first thing I want to do is I want to save my scene by going to save scene file save scene this will come up I usually like to keep things neat so I'm gonna create a new folder called scenes and put that in there just like that and then in there I'm gonna call this uh, level one there you go and now it comes up in your project hierarchy right here um, also I want to create right click create a new folder call that scripts and in the scripts I want to create a C sharp script and we're gonna call this debugger like that. all right so now we're going to start creating some basic game objects. So you can come up here to this tab up here, type in a game object, create other, and a, a new plane. And then uh, that's going to put it at the, I believe, position 000 in the world. So now if we were to switch to this game tab here, we can see what it would look like in game without any scripts running, just the way it would look like. So. It's kind of dark, but that's because we don't have a light. So come up to game object again, create other, and uh, we're going to add a directional light. Now, directional lights are the most effective lights because they're, well, no, they're not the most effective lights to make the game look good. But to light up the game, I find they're pretty damn good because they don't require, they don't, they don't break the performance of the game. So I usually like to use maybe two directional lights. Point lights are more for I don't know accuracy uh, make special places look like uh, different light colors or something like that spotlight what do you think a spotlight is an area light I've never used before so I'm gonna use a directional light bring it up here by tilting the angle of the light you can see that the plane below shades off so I'm just gonna point it kind of at an angle and when we put a cube here you're gonna see that now uh, let's, let's bring that back to zero 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 one y one you're gonna see that this side is shaded and then this side is not shaded but that's because of this directional light pointing at an angle think of the directional light as the Sun there you go all right so I'm gonna save the scene control s or file save and all I'm gonna do is click on my debugger script and drag it over onto the cube here and then just let go now what's happened is that we've placed a uh, debugger script on the cube alternatively you can click on the cube and drag the debugger onto that here that'll add it now you can double click here to open it or double click up here to open it or right click and open I'm gonna double click here 
mono develop should open if it doesn't open try again let me see how, how long we've been going five minutes good also quickly I'm gonna try to add some color to this to the cube so by doing that I'm gonna go down to mesh render click on default diffuse open that up and that doesn't work so I'm gonna go to create material uh, cube and then we have a new material I'm gonna drag that onto the cube and now here you're gonna see that it's called cube now and up here to the main color the tint here I'm just gonna change it to like red there we go we got a cube colored red so bring it down beautiful alright there we go mono develop is opened so you get instantly the void start and the void update we don't need a void update if you're not going to be using an update um, take it out because then if you don't take it out it's still going to try to call an update every frame so uh, we don't want that that will like reduce your performance your frames per second now void start I do want it but I'm just going to rewrite it it's good practice there's the void start whoops whoops that was a mistake and there's the void awake now what's the difference the difference is that void awake is always called first and then void start is called second so I would say void awake would be to set up your your script or whatever and then void start would be more to get um, things like get objects and save them as a, in, a, in a variable or something so if, if I was to say uh, my my player player as your player your game object player equals a uh, whoops sec game object player I'm gonna call it that now this is a variable of game object so the player is a game object what's a game object a game object is like this cube it's like the floor it's like a player it's it's just a game object a, a 3d game object okay so I'm gonna call that player if I wanted to save my player in the variable I'm just gonna go player equals uh, that's a game object so just game object like that I don't get it now what's the advantage of this the advantage is that when you're trying to find your game object your your player to maybe find a script in it or I don't know game object check in uh, your game object dot is active is your game object like active or is it disabled then you don't have to search for your game object which reduces which uses CPU it it requires the computer to work hard to find it it's got to check through everything and it's got to find it well now all we have to do is that we go what is the, the player dot is active now that means that the computer already knows where it is it doesn't have to search for it it knows where it is so I'm gonna stop going on about that now um, all I want to do is actually yeah that's pretty smart I'm gonna keep that there keep that there player dot uh, player equals game object just like that all right in my awake I'm going to delete my awake I don't need an awake but all we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, let's go uh, debug dot log player dot name so this means um, it's gonna debug to the the console the player dot name if you remember the player is this game object that we decided to save so the player could be the floor it depends on what what uh, what game object I guess you decide to put it in this variable and we're putting the player equals the game object game object with a small g means 
the object this script is attached to and we attach the script to the cube so this um, this variable here player will be the cube so let's call it something good I'm gonna call it Wiccan because it's the name of my channel so now it should debug Wiccaned let's test it Wiccaned there we go so now uh, let's close that again let's add something else uh, plus is the name of this object just type in anything else so what I did is I added a plus a I don't know comment sign is that, if that's what you call them is the name of this object simply like that let me turn up the volume here yeah is the name of the object and then just close it off with another comment sign thing a bracket and finally a semicolon now we hit play and we get Wiccaned is the name of this object and that's it for this first tutorial I hope you enjoyed it uh, check out some more of the basic tutorials I'm doing alright so yeah thank you for watching uh, Bye-bye.